What's up guys, what's going on? I'm Paul, this is Pauline Theology's Daily Devotional, as well as Trust in Jesus Ministries, and we are continuing in our study on Genesis. We're on the last part a lot here with him and his daughters, this crazy story that uh, kind of disgusting, but we're going to talk about it and see how God can turn uh, beauty to ash or ashes to beauty. Yeah. Turn beauty into Ah, well, however you say it, you know, people say it all the time. But uh, yeah, so this is kind of crazy. If you haven't read it yet, check it out. It's Genesis 19, 30 through 38. If you have read it, man, we're going to jump on in and answer the four questions that um, uh, we ask every time. So let's dive into it. What's the scripture saying? What is actually being said about the scripture? Well, what we've got here is that a um, lot, this is after the episode of Lot escaping from the terror of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah as he runs to the city of Zor. And then we had that little interlude where we talked about Abraham. And now we're back to what's going on with Lot after the night or the day, technically, that um, the destruction of the cities came about. And uh, he's kind of scared. So he takes off. It says that he goes up from Zor because he's afraid to dwell there. And then they live in the caves in the hill country. So in the end, where God told him to go, he ended up going anyway. He ended up going to um, um, into the hill country or to the mountains. It ain't that how it is, man. God always right. We always think that we can do shortcuts, take shortcuts, something like that. And in the end, we have to do what the word of the Lord says anyway. And that's what a lot has done. He went up into the hill country and then it says that uh, him and his daughters were there and they were basically by themselves. They, they weren't doing anything with anybody having any relations with anybody. And so the daughters were kind of tripping about having a seed, uh, having prodigy, you know? And so they came up with a scheme they thought was the best thing that they could do. And they said they was going to uh, get their father drunk and then they were going to have relations with him and then have a child so that they can continue um, having kids uh, to still have a people uh, for her father, but mainly really for themselves, someone that they can have a child with because there was no man around that they could uh, marry. And then. Lot wasn't doing anything because normally Lot may have gone out and got another wife. And then if he had another wife, he would have had another son. And then if he would have had another son and know that son could have been a father or some way like that, that could have done it. It could have uh, um, caused more progeny uh, and um, more family to happen. But it was not that way. It the, That incident, Sodom and Gomorrah changed a lot, it seemed like. Um, and he was not going anywhere. And so the girls were tripping. They didn't know what to do. And so they hatched this scheme and they um, got their father drunk and then they had sex with him and then they got pregnant and they had two children, one each, and they each became a father of a people. That's what God does for Abraham, though, man, all the people around him become peoples because God has blessed them. And because of the prodigy or because of the name of Abraham, man, he, he he blesses everybody. Whoever blesses Abraham gets blessed. And so they are the people of the uh, Ammonites and the Moabites. Uh, one, the first child's name, the, the daughter of the firstborn is Moab. And then the uh, other child, the second one, the daughter was, um, I'm not sorry, the daughter, the son was Ben Ammon. And he's the father of the Ammonites. So what's this say about God? Since we know what's going on, we know this crazy incident just happened. What's going on about God? Well, I think it shows that God is merciful because the sin that was committed here by the the children of Lot and then also um, the the fact that that uh, it's it's. It's a weird, it's a weird incident, man. This whole incest thing that's going on right now, but God is still merciful to allow that child to grow and become great. Not only does he live as a child and grow into a man, but he becomes a great nation. He becomes the Ammonites and the Moabites. So God is merciful, even in uh, situations where we don't think he is. And so I think that 
plays a part in, in even huger things when we see that we have uh, kids that, that may come out of wedlock uh, because of the, the, um, the, uh, I uh, mean, I can't promiscuousness of, of a of a woman and a man or because of even even a, a worse incident by God's grace may never happen. But uh, when children are born, it's God being merciful because that is life and God loves life. What do we see about man is that um, our actions impact our children. If you look and you see that Lot and his treachery against his own daughters uh, specifically in a sexual way where he was trying to give out his daughters to preserve or protect the, um, the angels. Well, now his daughters are exploiting him in the same way for their own gratification. And, uh, and, and a lot has to be a partaker in that, a participator in it. And so it is, um, they say, what do they say? Like, uh, something about your sons, are worse than you are. Well, that's what's happened here is that Lot's daughters have become more treacherous than they are. And the thing about it is in both ways, they're doing what they thought was the right thing to do. Lot was doing what he assumed was the, uh, the higher standard, which was to take care of the people in, um, uh, with hospitality that are foreigners or sojourners in the land, which is very important. And then the the daughters themselves also thought they were doing the right thing to do in order to preserve their lineage, in order to preserve um, the the people, their their life. But still, the sin was birthed from it. And Lot was the example for his daughters to do so. And then finally. Let's uh, apply this this truth to our lives. How do we see the mercifulness of God and our sin? Well, first off, I, I think we should uh, recognize that, man, God is still merciful even when we sin, even when we fall, even when we struggle in doing the right thing. We find grace with God. He is a graceful and a wonderful God. Um, I think, second, we also see that that. Life is precious, is it? no matter how it comes about, no matter where um, where it starts from. If it starts from sin and evil, that life in itself, that God is, is such a wonderful thing that he can take the worst and make them the greatest and, and, and the worst things and make them the greatest. And that's wonderful. And then finally, I think that uh, we should raise our children right. We should raise our children right. Like do all we can to show them uh, how we should walk. And that's according to the Lord. Hey, I appreciate you guys for listening. And I thank you for uh, taking the time to check it out. If you get a chance, man, check out the website, um, trustinjesusministries.com. See what we got there. All kinds of uh, um, information and resources that you can check out. And then if you feel like it, man, go ahead and donate and give us a uh, 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 some prayer requests as well. And then check out our ministry that we're doing as we're back in the, the scheme of things back out there um, in the in the streets, in the roads, in the in the uh, in the wilderness, trying to share the gospel to the people that are in nomadic community. I'll see you guys in the next episode.